Hello, my name is Veronica Calderon. I am a research and development scientist at Thermal Fisher Scientific located in Eugene, Oregon. In this webinar, we will talk about compensation, compensation best practices, and introduce the new UltraComp EV Plus Compensation B. To give a brief overview, we will discuss compensation, what is it and why do I need to use it, three rules of compensation, best practices, when to use cells or compensation beads, introduce the new UltraComp EV Plus compensation beads, and provide a compensation example. Fluorophores emit photons in a range of wavelengths. Each fluorescent marker has a unique wavelength spectrum, as shown here with the FITSI fluorescent marker. The spectra of the fluorescent marker determines the primary detector from where it will emit. For the CD3 FITSI antibody, it is excited by the 488 nanometer laser and is collected by the 53030 bandpass as shown. Issues can arise with the tail end of the wavelength, which can overlap into a secondary detector as shown with the CD4 PE antibody. The challenge is how to get correct signal when using multiple flow cytometry antibodies and reagents with overlapping emission spectra. The solution is compensation. The graph displays the spectral viewer for the violet 405 nanometer laser. A fluorescent marker collected in the 450-40 bandpass, the 525-50 bandpass, and the 71050 bandpass shall spill over across the different wavelengths. The flow plot shows uncompensated data collected with the violet laser. Cells were stained with CD3 super bright 436 and show its spillover into the E4506 detector that does not have stain. Compensation is needed. What is compensation? Compensation is the process of mathematically correcting for the background spillover of a fluorophore into a secondary detector. Looking at the same markers on the spectral viewer from before, the plot on the right is uncompensated data. But when compensation is applied, the signal is removed from the secondary detector and only the signal from the primary detector is seen. Why should I use compensation? Spillover into a second de secondary detector can result in false positives. This can especially be an issue when another marker is used in that secondary detector. Compensation ensures the interpretation of data within a channel is not impacted by the emission spectra from another fluorophore. There are three rules of compensation. First, compensation control must be as bright or brighter than the experimental sample. Second, the autofluorescence of the negative and positive carriers must be matched. And third, compensation fluorophore must precisely match the experimental fluorophore. We will go into a little more detail for each. Rule one, compensation control must be as bright or brighter than the experimental sample. These plots give a visual representation of rule one. UltraComp EVs plus in the upper left and cells in the upper right are stained with CD350. Brightness is critical, but must be on scale and within the bounds of the detector. The red line represents how the CD3 it's the antibody signal on the beads or on the cells is as bright or brighter than the experimental sample.
Rule two, autofluorescence of the negative and positive carriers must be matched. Carrier is the beads or cells. The negative and positive population must be from the same carrier. Mixing carriers is not recommended and can result in inaccurate compensation. When running compensation, an internal negative or universal negative can be used. An internal negative, shown on this slide, is a mix of an unstained negative population and a stained positive population, all in a single tube. When the histogram displays how the compensation control will be observed, observed when using an internal negative for compensation. There will be a CD8 negative population and a CD8 neg uh, positive population. A universal negative includes unstained negative carrier in a separate tube from the stained positive tube as shown in the histogram. Remember, if using beads as a universal negative, all positive tubes should also be stained beads. And if using cells as a universal negative, all positive tubes should be stained cells. Remember, mixing negative carriers is not recommended and can result in inaccurate compensation. Rule three, compensation fluorophore must precisely match the experimental fluorophore. For example, do not use Alexa Fluor 488 dye for compensation if using FITSI in your experimental sample, or do not use APC for compensation if using Alexa Fluor 647 in your experimental sample and vice versa. Spectral differences, though sometimes minimal, will result in an accurate compensation. Another rule, uh, another sub rule for rule three is do have a single stain control for each lot of tandem dyes because of lot to lot variability and time dependent changes of their spectral properties. As shown in the example, the top left plot shows uncompensated CD4 PE size seven, and it's spillover into the Percy B size five five detector, which does not have stain. The numbers represent the MSI values along the Y axis, which should be equally matched following accurate compensation. When compensation is applied using the CD4 PE size 7 antibody or control, the compensated plot on the right shows the sample has been properly compensated with matched MSI values. Below again, we have an uncompensated sample, but we'll change the marker and use CD62L PE size 7. And again, show spillover into the Percy B by 5-5 channel that has no stain. When compensation is applied using the CD4 PE size 7 control from above, the compensated plot on the right shows that the sample is incorrectly compensated with unmatched MFI values. Also for Rule three, compensation controls should be treated identically to samples. Light exposure and treatment such as fixation, permeabilization can alter the fluorescent molecule. This is again particularly important for tandem dye. Looking at compensation best practices, remember to optimize detector settings run compensation controls each time, and there is a solution to an off-scale control. There are different ways to optimize your detectors. Optimizing detectors involves identifying the voltage at which the detector is most sensitive for the specified fluorophore. Voltage optimization can include peak two through eight beads, 
CSET beads from BD Bioscience, specific fluorophores and cells that are being used within the experiments and other similar techniques. More information can be read at the following link, and these methods can be used across any instrument. Controls are important. Fresh compensation controls are prepared daily for each experimental run. There are day-to-day -day changes within your instrument's lasers that can occur, and as just discussed, light temperature, light temperature and treatment changes can affect the performance of a fluorophore. Each fluorophore needs a single color compensation control. Whether doing a simple four color panel as shown on the left or a more complex multicolor panel as shown on the right, spectral overlap will occur and the spillover can affect the accuracy of the data. If the compensation control is off scale, there is a solution to fix this. First, try to avoid reducing your PMTs. This can affect the sensitivity of the detector that was previously optimized. Some researchers will slightly adjust their voltages, usually for low expressing markers, by using cells stained with the experimental antibody. But in general, the detector settings should be kept consistent. The recommendation is to use the same amount of antibody as would be used on cells. The amount of antibody used on cells will be predetermined by titrating your antibodies. And remember to ensure that rule one still applies and the compensation signal is still as bright or brighter than the signal on your experimental sample. When to use cells or compensation beads. Use cells when there's a sufficient availability of cells. When there's a high abundance of a target antigen on the surface of the cell, or there's a high frequency of the cell population. The plots on the right show CD350 antibody stained on Ultracomp, EVEDS Plus, or on cells. There's a clear separation of the negative and positive populations on either the beads or the cells. Similarly, on the experimental sample below, which was compensated using the Ultracomp eBeads Plus, the positive CD3 population can be clearly separated from the negative population. In this case, cells would be sufficient when running compensation. On the other hand, use beads when there is a low cell yield or you have precious cells. When there's a low abundance of a target antigen on the surface of the cell, or when there's a low frequency of the cell population. The plots on the right show mouse CD11C E4660 antibody stained on Ultracomp uh, EBEATS Plus in the upper left, and on cells in the upper right. There's not a clear separation of the positive and negative population for the cells, but we can see a clear separation on the beads. Looking at the experimental sample, the CD11C po positive population can only be separated out with the cool expression of additional markers. CD19 and CD3 negative population are used along with the MHC class two marker on the lower right to identify the CD11C positive population more specifically dendritic cells. In this case, beads would be optimal to use for compensation. But compensation beads are also commonly used for high abundance, high frequency population. They provide an ease of use, especially for large panels. Now introducing the Ultracomp eBeads Plus compensation beads. The Ultracomp eBeads Plus are the second generation of Ultracomp eBeads. They react with antibodies of mouse 
rat and hamster origin, similar to the first generation, and now with the added species of rabbit and recombinant human antibodies. They have improved fluorophore capability, displaying similar compensation with bilate excitable dyes when compared to compensation with cells. The added species reactivity is shown in the two plots on the left. Ultracomp EVs plus react with rabbit antibodies and with recombinant human antibodies. Violet dye capability has been improved with the far red dyes, such as Super Bright 780 and Brilliant Violet 786 when compared to cells. With the original Ultracomp EVs, it was recommended to run compensation of these dyes with cells. The new Ultracomp EVs Plus have a more similar compensation to cells as seen in the scatter plots. The plots show cells stained with Brilliant Violet 786 dye and the spillover into the Brilliant Violet 421 channel, which does not have stain. When compensated using cells, the signal into the BV421 channel is removed. When compensated using the first generation Ultracomp EVs, the signal is now overcompensated. When compensated using the Ultracomp EVs plus compensation beads, the signal is displayed more similar to compensation with cells. Looking at an example of a mouse splenocyte immunophenotyping panel, on top the panel is compensated using the Ultracomp EVs Plus, while the bottom is uncompensated. For high abundant targets and high frequency populations such as the live dead, CD19, and CD3, the percent positive differences are pretty minimal. For CD3, CD19, However, there are significant differences in the percent positive with the non-T, non-B positive population. Moving further into the panel, clear identification of low abundant and low frequency populations, such as dendritic cells and NK cells, can be obtained by compensating with the Ultracomp EVs Plus. Without compensation, the, DC pop, the dendritic cell population cannot be identified, and the NK cell population is significantly reduced. Compensation is critical for accurately identifying cell populations. In summary, compensation mathematically corrects for the spillover of the fluorophore into a secondary detector and ensures that the data within a channel is not impacted by other fluorochromes. Three rules of compensation are one, compensation control must be as bright or brighter than the experimental sample. Two, autofluorescence of the negative and positive carriers must be matched. And three, compensation fluorophore must precisely match the experimental fluorophore. A few best practices are to optimize your detectors, to run compensation for every experiment, Use a single color compensation control for each floor four. And when using compensation beads, if the signal is off scale, try to avoid reducing your PMTs. Instead, dilute the antibody using the same pre-titrated antibody amount that will be used on your cells. Use cells only for high abundant and high frequency cell populations. Beads are commonly used for low abundant and low frequency populations but are also used for high abundant and high frequency populations as well. Ultracomp EBs Plus are the second generation of Ultracomp EBs that have the added reactivity to human, to human and rabbit antibodies and improved fluorophore capability with far red violet excitable dyes. Thank you.